Hello everyone, my name is Wayne, and in this episode, we are going to be testing the Tarion Y5D Auto Dolly and see if it's worth upgrading from a cheaper manual table dolly. I'm always trying to find ways to step up my product bureau game. I already have a manual table dolly, which is dope for orbiting table shots. However, since I'm moving this manually, the shots are not always evenly paced. I wanted to test this motorized dolly out to see if I can get a more consistent speed and ultimately see if I can get better results. This video has a lot of parts, so I'm gonna leave timestamps in the description below if you wanna skip ahead to the parts you're interested in. Okay, let's do a quick unboxing first and see what's included in the package. We have the dolly itself, a remote, a reversible screw mount that has a quarter 20 and a 3 screw, a USB cable for charging, a hex key, and a wheel rubber replacement. As far as build, it looks like the body is made out of plastic and the arms are made out of aluminum. On top, you have a quarter 20 and a 3 8 hole to attach the screw that's included. On one side you have an off and on switch and a micro USB input for charging. On the other side you have a direction button, a speed button to toggle between the three speeds, and lastly a battery charge indicator. All of these functions are also present in the remote apart from the off and on switch and the charge indicator. To operate this you have to turn on the dolly first, select the speed, then adjust the two wheels to go to the direction you want. Then you can either press the left or right direction button or press the start and stop button in the remote to start the dolly. As I mentioned, you can also control the left or right direction and the speed increments using the remote. For those of you who want to know the approximate speed of each step, I did a little experiment. What I did is measured and marked one foot and time the movement of the dolly for each increment of speed. Mind you, this is just to get an approximation and it's not 100% exact. This is the low speed and it takes about 28 seconds a foot. This is the medium speed and it takes about 15 seconds a foot. This is the high speed and it takes about 12 seconds a foot. Another side note, for those of you who want to know the maximum weight capacity of this dolly, it's about 6.6 .6 pounds. I'm using this system with my GH5 plus my Lumix 12-35 to lens, and this is coming in at about 2 pounds. So depending on the weight of your setup, the speed might vary. With all of that out of the way, let's look at some test shots, and later I'll give you my thoughts on this dolly. Okay, let's start with the pros. The biggest and most impressive thing to me is the orbiting shot you can get at a consistent speed using this dolly. That's what I was hoping for and it delivered. I've never been able to get shots like these before, 
And when you add speed jams on it, it looks pretty dope. The second thing I like about this dolly is it's extremely compact. So it requires less table space to operate versus my manual dolly. This is especially useful when you're dollying using a small table. Lastly, this is only about $60 to $70. A manual table dolly almost costs 40 bucks, so the price difference is really not that big. Now for the cons. What I noticed is that all the shots I got using this dolly had micro jitters. This is probably going to be a deal breaker for most of you, and it was going to be for me. People that review this product always say they get smooth shots with this dolly, but if you look at their test shots closely, I'm seeing micro jitters also. It is present in all speeds, but it is more prominent in the medium and high speed as you'll see here. I tried using IS hoping it can help, but it really didn't do much. However, for me, like I mentioned, the shot that I'm really going to use this for is the orbiting shot, which I found that if you apply a warp stabilizer in post, the shots improve dramatically making it look super clean. I tried this technique with the tracking and dolly shots. Unfortunately, it is less noticeable. So I guess if you're going to use this for a slighter type of movement, know that you'll get micro jitters in your shot. I mean, it's usable, but if it bothers you, this might not be for you. Second, if you're using a heavier camera and do a dolly in or out type of shot, the camera will tip over unless you add an extra weight. In my case, I use a shoulder mount weight and it helped with the balance. Lastly, when you move the arms to guide the direction, there's no groove or hard stop, making it hard to know if your wheels are lined up or in the same spot. You do have guides, but using this is really not that precise. As a result, it's hard to predict where your lines or your circle paths are going to be. So I showed you guys the test shots and the pros and cons of the Tarion Y5D Auto Dolly. It really depends on how you're going to use this, if it's worth buying or not. I can't fully recommend this because of the micro jitter issue, but if you're going to do orbiting shots and you can do post stabilization, then it might be worth it. Ultimately, this is the main reason why I'm keeping this. Alright you guys, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys dug the content, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.